Okay, so you have arrived at the campground. Let's get you set up. Follow me back here to the back of the camper. Whenever you park, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you position the camper in a way that you can connect the power cable and a water hose to this box. Most campgrounds will have it right in the middle of the spot. This one happens to be farther back, but they should be long enough to get there. Right here in the back uh, on the passenger side are all of the cables you're gonna need. We have a power cord, we have a black water hose, and we have your water hose. So let's go ahead and get you started. Up. Okay, so to get the water set up, we're gonna connect the regulator to the actual hose. This just maintains the water pressure. If there's any surges, it won't uh, create any problems in the camper. I'm gonna take the other end and come over here. We actually have two options. We have a city fill and a tank fill. If you parked for the night, you're gonna go ahead and in connect this to the city fill and that'll allow you to have free flowing water the whole time you're bunked down before you leave if you're going to be boondocking or if you want to have water as you're on the road you can connect to the tank fill i'll show you in a moment how to look at the regulator inside to see how full it is and how much you actually need but right now we're just going to set up the city fill by turning on the water All right, now it's time to get some power to this thing. Your power cable has a surge protector on one end and the plug for the camper on the other. So we're just gonna go ahead and lay this on the ground. We're gonna open the junction box and we have two plugs. One's gonna be a 50 amp and one's gonna be a 30. You can tell because the plug matches our 30 amp. Up here is the circuit breaker. You're just gonna wanna make sure it's off first and go ahead and plug this in. We're gonna come over here to the camper using the plug. All the way here under the kitchen window is the plug. You can just go ahead and plug it in. Don't feel the need to have to screw this in at all. It's fine if it's just plugged in. And then we'll go back over here. Now that we're all set up, we can go ahead and flip the switch. We have power to the camper. All right, now it's time to set up the sewer, something I know is a little scary, but it's really not that big a deal. In this bottom drawer here, we have uh, blue gloves for you. That's just gonna make sure your hands stay clean during this process, but you shouldn't expect any problems if you follow the steps. I'm about to show you. Go ahead and take the black water hose or the sewage hose and come over to the back of the camper here. And this is the black water and the gray water drain. So the first thing you wanna do always is look underneath here, we have two levers. Let's just go ahead and make sure both of those are pushed in and that way we won't have any surprises whenever we open up this right here. You may have a little trickle, but it's better than what might've happened. We'll use this end with these uh, connectors and go ahead and pop it on and twist. It'll be hard, but we want it to, to make sure that there's not any problems. We'll take the other end and put it into the sewage hole in the campground. Uh, this campground doesn't have one, so we're just pretending right now. But um, now that we're set up, you're gonna go ahead and first pull the black water lever, and then you would pull the gray water lever. And then you can leave those open as long as this is in the ground. And the reason we do that is the black water will uh, dispense first and then the gray water, which is your dish soap and uh, your hand soap, all of that kind of stuff will come through and kind of clean the tube. So now you're all set up. We have power, we have water, and we have our sewage set up. All right, just to get you familiar what is happening back here on the back side of the camper, you have a few things. You have a plug if you want to plug anything, if you have these doors open and want to put a TV back here or something. You have a socket uh, DC adapter like the one you would use for your cell phone. Uh, this light right here, uh, this switch turns on the light if you'll follow me right above here so you can get a little light back here. Uh, the water pump, if you were just on the uh, tank, if you're not connected to city water, if you're just using your tank, you would use this switch, and there's one inside as well, to get the water pump, to pump the water out of that tank for your sinks and your toilets and stuff. And the last thing we have here for light switches is this switch, which turns on the light above the dump station. So if you need a little extra light at night. And the last thing we have 
if you open up this little port right here, um, we have a um, exterior shower and you would just simply pop this into here and uh, to remove it, you just pull this, uh, push this forward and it should pop off. I'll be honest with you, it's a tough cookie, so I would just use the shower inside uh, unless you really need this. And the last thing I'll show you while we're down here is uh, this little guy. Uh, we have an adapter. If you decide to stay at your mom's house or something like that, just simply connect this to the power cord and then you can plug into any outlet on, on a house um, to get power. And then this guy, um, if for some reason the sewage hose needs some leveling, this just pulls out to get you some height and a flow down into the drain. All right, so the bathroom. How does the bathroom work? Well, the toilet is right, a toilet, right? But it is just a little different. Um, if you need to flush, um, there is a switch right here that you simply press down on to get some water and everything goes down the drain. Um, this hose here, the bidet, some people call it, um, doesn't work, you see, unless this is pressed down. It's the only way you can get water to flow there. Above the toilet, we have a sink uh, with a faucet. Uh, and this bin here creates a sink. Uh, it will collect water, but whenever you close it, all that water will dump into the sink. Uh, this latch can be tricky. It's just part of RV life to have little quirks. So if for some reason it doesn't close, it just means that this little guy was pushed in right here. Just pull it out and it will close. Up here uh, in the medicine cabinet, um, we have a little bit of room for you to add um, some toiletries and things like that. We have a shower uh, towel hook here for you here. We have a laundry hamper for you here. When this is closed, you'll have easy access to your toilet paper and this guy. And then uh, the shower head. Um, you know, a quick rule about showers in a camper, you're gonna have about six gallons of hot water, so you need to make the most of it as possible. So you're first off probably gonna to want to use the least amount of heat as possible, and then take um, a Navy shower if you wanna Google that, where basically you rinse off, turn off the water, soap up, and then rinse off again, turning off the water between each step just to make the most of that. We're gonna come around this side of the camper and I'm gonna show you how to put up the shower curtain. Okay, now it's time to take a shower. I'm here in the bathroom. It's a little tight quarter. Sorry for the uh, close-up on my face. Um, right here in the closet is a few things you're going to need. Down here on the bottom, um, oh look, that coat hanger fell off. Um, we have some towels for you, some washcloths, we have a hair dryer, and right here in this bend is your shower curtain. Um, I'm going to go ahead and help you get that set up right now. Uh, the shower curtain has these uh, snap buttons on top, right? And then along the top of here, you're going to notice there are snap buttons as well. The shower curtain always ha also has some magnets on it, and I'll show you why in just one second. But the first one starts here about one third of the way into this door, and just start snapping your way along. Um, and you can snap all the way to the one right above the mirror. You don't have to do the whole bathroom. Um, and then the magnets over here will just help pull this back so that it's a little bit out of your way. You can tuck this around. And once you close the doors, you'll be able to take your shower. Okay, we've set everything up outside. We've got our water going, we have our electrical, we have our sewage hose connected, so let's relax. Come inside, I'm gonna show you where everything is. The first thing you see when you get inside is your kitchen. We have a couple of lights above here. Um, we have a refrigerator. Uh, it's best to keep this set at about four or five, but it really depends on the temperature outside. So just keep an eye on how your food's doing. If you get the temperature up to about seven on the dial inside, all the fruit food may freeze. So just keep an eye on how everything's doing. Uh, this is a microwave slash convection oven. And uh, so there's a lot of options here. We mainly use it as a microwave. If you know how to use a convection oven, please, by all means, bake a cake. I just don't know how to. Uh, we have a cutting board slash table here. You just pull this out. 
Uh, you can cut on this a little extra storage space, and you can also use it as a table for this captain's chair whenever I spin it around for a while. Up here is all of the kitchen storage, and we're going to send you off with a few things. We have a slow cooker here, a toaster, some cleaning wipes, collapsible bowls. This container has a bunch of pots in it, about four pots and a skillet, a Pyrex dish. We have a few glasses for you. Uh, back here is a percolator. That's about one tablespoon of coffee per cup of water. It's a 12 cup percolator. Uh, we have paper towels. We have some dish towels for you, bowls, a strainer, plates. In this container here, we have um, some more coffee stuff. We have coffee cups. Uh, this kettle uh, right here pops up for you to make boiling water if you need tea or anything like that. Um, and then the last thing in here is a palm press. This is basically a little tiny coffee maker. Um, if you go to their website, palmpress.com, it's basically like a little pour over. You squish it down for a cup of espresso. Uh, and then the last container here has um, an ice cube tray and some more bowls. Um, so with all of that going, let me just show you um, also the stove right here. Uh, this is a propane stove. So we have two burners and the power switches. To make sure that it's working, you just want to make sure that this switch right here, it says LP for propane, is on. It's currently off, so we're going to go ahead and turn that on. Come back over to the kitchen, and the way you light it is you simply press this button right here. You're going to hear it popping. Turn the stove to light. We see we have fuel. Um, get it over to a flame, and then let go. And we have some fire. Um, just simply turn uh, off to turn it off. Uh, next to the stove, we have the kitchen sink. So this glass cover simply lifts up. This whole bin lifts out. You can put it um, on the sink or put it up front, whatever's out of the way there. It contains a cutting board. It has a dish rack, which goes uh, right here above the sink. You can just pop it on right there. Uh, some Dawn liquid. Um, you can use this bin to, um, you know, put dish water to clean to, you know, if you're boondocking or going off of tank water to kind of preserve the amount of water you're using. Um, or you could just put it out of the way and use the sink. Um, with the water turned on, uh, we have a simple tap right here that will turn it off. It's good to keep that turned off so that there's no trickle as you're driving and that kind of stuff. Just a couple more things in the kitchen. If you look right below the microwave, we have a couple of drawers. Um, you're gonna notice some tape. Um, RVs are weird little guys. There are quirks that you gotta deal with. This drawer is a little heavy um, for the latch. So whenever you're driving, just have this tape on here and remove it whenever you park um, so that it doesn't open while you're driving. Um, in here we have uh, everything you should need. We have knives, little um, spatulas, some utensils, another spatula, spoons, uh, tongs. We have a lighter, wine bottle opener, beer bottle opener, some lighters, a little sewing kit for you. Uh, this guy right here has all of your silverware. We have metal uh, fork, knife, spoon, and we have plastic fork, knife, and spoon for you in here, as well as a can opener. Uh, we also have some salt and pepper in there. Uh, there's another drawer down here that's empty, so if you have anything like your spices or whatever, you can put them down here. Um, and the other thing you should really know about the kitchen, if you need a little more light, right here at the very end is a light switch that'll turn on this bar up here that gives you a nice amount of light for while you're cooking and that kind of stuff. And I think that's the kitchen. Right here next to the kitchen on the floor is what we call the wine cellar. I don't keep wine in it. I keep tools and random things that you might need during the trip, so it's good for you to know about it. Simply pull up this latch uh, right here to pull it up. And in here we have a broom and dustpan for you to do your daily cleaning. Uh, we use this guy for like cleaning outside and stuff like that. You know, there's like scissors in here, Velcro, a small first aid kit, um, some cleaning supplies. Uh, more Velcro. This right here is gaffer's tape. Um, if there's anything going on in the camper that you feel like you need to lock it down, like a rattle or a drawer's opening, go ahead and use this stuff. It's not going to hurt anything. It'll hold very tight, but it's not going to hurt the camper. So feel free to use it. we got a few Ziploc bags, uh, some plumber's tape. This is great if the water hose at the campground is uh, squirting water or something like that. So um, you're welcome to dig through here. There's a couple of tools, a screwdriver set and that kind of stuff.
Okay, so we uh, understand where the kitchen is. We have everything all set up. We're gonna need a little privacy. And there's a couple options for you here. Uh, the first one is uh, we have these curtains that you can simply close. Um, and this will provide you a good amount of privacy. These are blackout curtains, they're thermal. If you were to, you know, park at someone's house or uh, just pull over to sleep at a rest stop or something, this will provide you a lot of quick privacy. But if you're going to be locked down for maybe, uh, you know, overnight or a couple of days, the best thing to do is to close off the entire cabin. And you do that with uh, a couple of shades that are all right here above the uh, cab. So the first, the longer set of shades goes across the front of the camper here. You're going to put the silver side out. Tuck them behind the mirror and put these down. The shorter ones go on the side windows and they have, um, again, silver to face out and they're the shape of the windows. So this one's going to go right here on the driver's side. And this one's going to go right here on the passenger side. And that'll give you a lot of privacy and heat protection. Um, this window here is obviously very open. And right up here we have a couple more uh, privacy curtains for you. Uh, this bigger one here goes right here. You'll notice there's a notch in the corner down here on the bottom and that goes in the bottom corner where the door latch is and you just pop that on it has magnets got privacy there we can close these shades and then on either side of the bed we have more shades right above and now we have complete privacy and it actually helps with the uh, temperature inside the camper as well uh, you have two more uh, privacy shades. These go all the way in the back windows and they're just magnets as well. You're just going to pop up there to get a little more privacy. Okay, so um, we have our two beds, but the only real places to sit in the camper are these two chairs. Obviously, they're facing the wrong way right now. So I'm just going to go ahead and turn them around for you. Um, the chairs have a bar in the front that make them go front and back, right? And then they have two latches on either side of your knees. The one on the inside is on the left um, makes the seat spin. So if we just pull up this latch, we can turn the chair around this way. Uh, this little table here has a table that comes up so you can sit here. And then the same thing on this side. The inside latch will spin the chair around and you can pull this out for dining. Uh, the latch on the other side makes the back go forward and back. Oh my goodness, I have done all this work setting this up and I'm hot. It's time for a little AC. So if we take a look up here, this monster uh, will actually freeze you out if you let it. Uh, it's really powerful. It's very loud. If you like white noise, this guy is your friend. Um, it's got a few switches here. We have... Um, a thermostat which goes from red to blue the red is not a heater it's just a lower cool it's always going to be very cool though the other switch has low fan high fan um, high cool and low cool and you just simply switch it to wherever you want it to be and let it go we have a louver here to control the air coming out of the back a louver here to control air coming out of the front and these guys are great for cooling off on the bed on a hot summer day. I'm going to turn it off for now so you can hear me better. Okay, now it's time to get a little complicated. We're going to talk you through the control panels over here. We look right over here. At the top is the solar panel controller, right? But the only thing we want to keep an eye on here is right now you see it says 13.6. If you're unplugged, if you're parked, the camper is turned off. If you start to see this get below 12, 11.5,
go ahead and turn the engine on for a little while um, or uh, start the generator, which I'll show you how to do, to feed the uh, batteries that are in the camper to make sure that they don't die. So um, 12, 11.5 is the magic number. We don't want to let it get below that. I've already shown you the uh, propane. This is to make sure you have hot water um, and also um, be able to light the stove and that kind of stuff. This one place right here um, is really important. It's probably what you're going to use the uh, most. The first thing you're going to see is uh, right here is the generator. Um, if you are boondocked in a parking lot somewhere where you're allowed to make a lot of noise, you can go ahead and use the generator and you simply uh, click start and hold it until you hear it turn on. Um, and then uh, at that point, if you're not plugged into a campsite, you would be able to use the microwave and the air conditioner. So if you're not plugged in, the only way that you'll be able to use the air conditioner and microwave is if you turn on the generator. Um, down here is uh, the water pump as well. So if you are not plugged into a uh, city line, um, you're going to need to turn on the water pump. You just press it once and it'll tell you here, water pump off, water pump on, um, and then that'll get you flowing water for the toilet and sinks and all that kind of stuff from the tank. Uh, next thing we have is tank level. Um, if you just click that, you can see that our fresh water tank is currently empty. Our gray water tank, which is our dish water, et cetera, is currently empty. Uh, gray water too is not real. Um, black water tank is empty. That's from our toilet. And then our LP gas, that's our propane, is full. So that's how you check those tank levels uh, just to see what's going on. Uh, the last thing is battery levels. And again, here we have 13.4, which is somewhere around the same as it is up here. It's just easier to see it up here. Uh, this panel, you're never going to use. Don't even worry about that. Uh, okay, so I'm going to talk you through turning on the heater, which would only be necessary in winter, and the hot water for the camper. Uh, this switch right here, the Truma, is our heater. So to turn it on, you simply press the center of this dial down here. The first light we see flashing here is the heater for the camper. So if we um, want to scroll through these options, we just turn the dial and whichever one is flashing is the option we're gonna wanna choose. So for instance, to choose heat, we would just have it flashing, press the center option, and we see that it's currently off. By turning the dial, we'll set a temperature for the heat that we want. Um, and generally it blows very hot. So even 68 degrees on the coldest day would be extremely, extremely warm. Um, you'd simply press it again to uh, set the temperature. And then to turn it off, you would come back to the heater, press it again, and then lower the dial all the way to off. To turn on the hot water, we dial to the second option, which is the thermometer with the water. We press the center button and we see that it's off. We dial to see that we have an eco option, um, a hot option, and a boost option. You're going to use boost or hot. Boost will give you six gallons of hot water in about 20 minutes. The hot option will keep your water hot as long as you're plugged in and this is turned on. Uh, so right now we're just going to leave it on hot. And then we're gonna choose where we're getting our power to heat. So by clicking on this option, the propane bottle with the lightning bolts, um, we have the option of gas. We have mix one, which is gas and electric. Mix two, which would be battery and gas. And then we have electric one and electric two. Electric two would be uh, battery and uh, electric. I would say your best option is to always use gas. Um, for this heater, the uh, gas propane will always be very reliable and it'll always get as hot as you need it to be. The electric uh, tends to be a bit lukewarm. And that is the um, hot water heater. The only other switch we have to show you is this guy. And it would only come in handy in winter um, in extremely low temperatures, uh, freezing temperatures. It heats the black holding tank. So that just makes sure that the uh, sewer doesn't freeze. Um, so that would be the only time you use this switch. Okay, now it's time to set up the bed for uh, king size sleeping. You can sleep on the two twin beds if you like to, but if you need a little more room, it's pretty simple. We're just gonna lift these blankets here. And then underneath this mattress is a couple of pieces 
of plywood, right? Um, the first piece of plywood, we're just gonna take and slip it right underneath these um, springs right here and then let it rest right here on the other side. Uh, the second piece of plywood simply comes to fill this gap right here and it just pops into place. Put our mattress down. It's very solid, even for someone my size. Make sure the mattresses are pushed aside and then we pop in our bolsters and we have a king size bed. Ryan's gonna throw me all the pillows right now. Uh, thank you, Ryan. Pillow, pillow, uh, pillow. So these two pillows you may not have recognized are actually your duvet covers. So these are down comforters uh, that are um, inside these pillowcases. So you can just pop these out if you need a little more warmth or you can use them as pillows. Okay, to operate the TV and the entertainment center. It's a little complicated, but it's not too bad. I'll try and walk you through it. And then you could always message us if you have questions. Um, the TV runs off of the battery. So um, even if you're just parked in a parking lot, not connected to anything, you'll be able to watch TV. And of course it works if you're connected to the electrical as well. Uh, so the first thing you wanna do to um, operate the TV is make sure that this switch right here that says TV, that it is flipped on. And you can tell that the TV is working now because this red light is blinking. Um, in this bin right here in the cubby, we have a few games for you like Uno and Scrabble, cards, dice. We also have a remote control. So um, the TV um, is currently on um, and it is uh, saying that it has no power. We don't see anything here. It says no TV input because it thinks it wants to be connected to our antenna which isn't currently powered on. So to power it on, we're just gonna simply click this um, next to this coaxial um, connection here, this little tiny button, uh, if you press it, if you look back over at this, before long, this case will... uh, that's our antenna. So, and we can see that it has full bars right now. Um, if this were blinking or for a lower one bar, you would just simply press this button and spin this around to get a better signal. So place it wherever you get four bars or do the best you can to get uh, TV reception. Okay, so um, with the TV turned on, um, you probably moved around so it hasn't collected uh, its TV stations yet, correct? So you'll just simply go to the um, menu button. Lower this real quick. Uh, click the menu button. And then we're going to go over to uh, using this button in the middle here. We're going to go to channels, click OK. And then we're going to do auto channel search. And then we're going to choose antenna. And that's going to take a few minutes. What it's going to do is collect all the uh, channels in your area. And um, you'll see how many channels you have here. Simply press exit and you'll be able to use the channel button on here to scroll through the TV stations. So the last thing we have is our Jensen Entertainment Center. This has a few different options. You can play DVDs in here. Um, if you simply put the DVD in, it should switch the TV. If that doesn't work, just change the input option to HD HDMI on the TV. Um, and um, with it powered on, um, right now it's on radio. Um, one thing I want you to see is we have three speakers, A, B, and C, and they correspond to these buttons here. And you could turn off speakers by clicking these buttons. I just want you to recognize that button C is the outdoor speakers. So if you don't wanna interrupt your neighbors, go ahead and make sure that C is turned off. If you're at a party and wanna play music outside, then click C to turn it on. Right now we see that there is no outdoor speaker because there's no letter C right here. Um, to switch between these options, you just use the source button and you can scroll through Bluetooth, which you can connect to your phone. Um, uh, those don't, auxiliary, um, we don't have an optical. The HDMI would be for the DVD player and then radio. And then once you've chosen the option you want, you simply hit enter. To pair your phone with the Bluetooth, you simply uh, click the source button till we get to Bluetooth, hit enter. 
and then hold down the enter button until it says pairing and then follow the prompts on your phone uh, until it's connected. Another way to connect um, that's very quick and simple is to use your phone cable to plug into the USB port. Whenever you do that, this will automatically play the music from your phone. And that's the Entertainment Center. Again, if you have any questions about that, just message me and I will uh, see if I can walk you. A few more things right over here by the cargo door. I have a few more switches you should know about. This one right here uh, turns on the lights for the um, steps up into the camper, which are helpful at night, especially if you, it's dark, you can find your way back with those. Uh, this one here, coach battery, we wanna make sure that that's on all the time. That'd be something we would turn off if we were storing the camper for the winter or something like that. So just always make sure if something gets bumped around that this is on. This outlet, um, it seems a little, um, you know, inconspicuous, but it's very important. If for some reason this outlet trips, if you find out you don't have power in any of the outlets in the camper, it's because this one tripped. So just go ahead and hit the reset button and you should get all of your power back. Uh, down here, the last thing we have is the awning. So uh, we have awning out and in, and by clicking the out button, the awning's gonna come out for you. It'll uh, deploy as far as uh, it can go and stop by itself, but just make sure there are no obstacles in the way uh, that it might hit, like an umbrella or a tree or something like that that could damage it. It does have a couple of patched holes, so don't worry about those, you won't get water. Uh, once the awning is out, uh, the switch next to it is for the awning light. So if you want to hang out outside, you just simply click that and you have a little light at night. Um, to put the awning in, you just simply press awning in and it'll deploy all the way back in. Okay, I just want to quickly go over where all of the light switches are because there's a lot of them for this little camper. So let's go ahead and start off right here. The first switch by the door in the cargo turns the light on outside um, by, by the speakers. Uh, the light switch next to it turns the lights on above my head. Um, right here in the kitchen next to the uh, microwave here is the lights that turn on the cab bar. Um, we have a light switch here above the kitchen stove. If we come all the way in the back of the camper, these two light switches right here turn off all of the cargo lights, uh, the strip that runs right down the middle. And then above your head on either side, I feel like a flight attendant, on either side, we have these reading lights, which if you press them once, you get a blue light. But if you hold this down, you get a bright white light as well. Um, the only other light switch we have is right here under the medicine cabinet, and it turns off and on the bathroom light. And I think that covers all of the lighting. One thing um, as far as lighting goes at night, you may find that this is a little bright. There's a brightness switch right here. You could just click it down until it turns off completely. And that's all the lighting.